Hello, world. Hello, Internet. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, everyone. I, I think it's Friday, is it? Yeah, it's Friday. <laughs> All right. Hey, folks. So uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Quoted Live. I'm your host, Sam Basu. And it's Friday, and it's time for the chat show, which means we're not sharing screens. We are explicitly taking time out to talk to people uh, that we're kind of missing out, hanging out in person during the pandemic. And today, I'm delighted to have my good friend this way. Yeah, all right. Eve. Hello. How are Hi, you? Hi, Sam. I'm well. How are you doing? I'm hanging in there. Glad it's Friday. Yeah, I know. So, um, yeah, uh, like I said, this is uh, a chat show where, uh, you know, we are missing out, hanging out in person. And we are just taking the time to talk to passionate folks, folks we love to hang out with. And just kind of get to know the humans behind IT a little better. So uh, thanks and uh, glad you could join us today, Eve. I'm excited to be here. We're probably the yeah. two closest geographically located, yes. aren't we? Yes, I am glad uh, that you brought that up because I talk to people from all over the world. They are all far away, but you and me have a real opportunity to hang out in person soon enough, hopefully. Yeah. So I'm in I'm in Northwest Pennsylvania. I'm in Erie, and Eve is in um, Pittsburgh, right? Uh, north of Pittsburgh, or where are yep. you exactly? Right off the turnpike, like in the, right in that Cranberry Wexford area. Oh, nice, nice. That's real close, actually. Just less than two hours away. Yeah. <laughs> so Eve is actually my colleague, and she is uh, the face behind a lot of things you see with Fiddler, so we'll get into that. But uh, Eve, why don't I let you start to uh, kind of start telling us about uh, maybe an existential question. Who are you? I know. I thought about this one a little bit. I watched a few of your other podcasts and listened to the other answers. I'm like, you know, how do you, how deep do I get here? Um, but I'll just start out. I would say by trade, you know, I'm a technical marketer. And as you mentioned, I'm the, on the DevRel team and I deal with all things Fiddler related. But I would say at heart, I am a very organized person. Um, oh, nice. Oddly adventurous, though. Usually those don't always go together. Sometimes you're organized and adventurous. Um, and I would say I'm one of those people that always thinks in terms of like plan A, B, and C. Like I always have, okay, if this doesn't work, I'm going to do this and this. I, my mind just thinks in that way. Nice, nice. Yeah, and um, you, you mentioned you are uh, north of Pittsburgh, but uh, how long have you been there? Do you love it? Anything you don't I do like? love it. I mean, it's probably going on 15 years. I kind of lost oh, track. Wow. Yeah. So it's been a long time. We've always been in the north. Um, it's a neat city. Yeah, it, it really is. And Pittsburgh has like so much. Like it, it has, um, like it, it's got the three rivers. It's It's got some mountains. And I mean, there's plenty to do around just if you want it to be outdoors. Yeah, it has a great sporting yeah. scene in terms it of all does, the venues. Yeah. And I mean, people really get behind sports here compared to other cities. So yeah, yeah. So you, you're talking about the Steelers, if you're an NFL fan, and then uh, yes. the Penguins, if you're into Correct. Hockey. Yeah. Two, and then two the Pirates. Teams. You know, oh, not, the all, Pirates not all cities yeah, have yeah. three. <laughs> we don't have true. basketball. That's true. That's true. I am um, uniquely kind of in between. I'm, I'm actually equidistant from three major uh, football teams. So the Steelers, uh, the Bills, the Buffalo Bills, and the Cleveland um, you know, Browns. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know if I care about any three of them too much, <laughs> uh, but it, it's good to have like big sports teams. Uh, nearby, yeah. You know. Yeah. Cool. I get that. My yeah. husband was at the store and he had a Bills pullover on and a Steelers mask, and the guy's like, "So which one is it? <laughs> like, you got to pick one." Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. I think he picked cool. the Bills. I was like, "You better run out of there fast." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, cool. So uh, you you uh, you mentioned that you are DevRel uh, for all things Fiddler. Um, uh, can you can you describe a little bit more as to what that means? So sure. So one of the big things I'm working with is kind of being that that user advocate, right? Working with um, the developer community, whether that be through trade shows, um, events, you know, even though virtual coming up, um, really getting the messaging out, kind of differentiating for people. I mean, a lot of uh, users out there and viewers know Fiddler, but sometimes they're not aware that Fiddler has so many other products within it. There's a whole family of Fiddler products. You know, right now we're counting up five. So my job is to get some of that awareness out, um, make sure, you know, we stay future rich and relevant within the community, um, kind of be those eyes and ears. Yeah, that, that's well said. And 
like a lot of dotnet developers kind of grew up with fiddler it's just so ubiquitous like we have always used fiddler but like you said like not a lot of people know that it's just a big family of products now it's just not one thing right um uh, so can you just rattle off some of the things that fiddler is today so i mean one of the newest things that came out with just within the last week is that we have a product called fiddler jam um mm -hmm. and what's neat about this is it's a chrome extension to help trouble um support teams troubleshoot remote customer issues. Um, nice. And it just went from a closed trial uh, to an open trial, like literally yesterday. So you're kind of hearing it, hearing it here first on nice, Sam's nice. show. Um, yeah. And the feedback thus far during that closed trial has been really fantastic. Um, it's yeah. easy to use. There's not a lot of complicated steps. Um, people are able to get to the root cause, you know, very quickly and it's because you don't have that back and forth typically associated with that process. Um, so I would say this is a thing that you're going to see billion dollar companies adopt, you know, as yeah. well as small startups who really want to deliver a better customer support experience. Yeah. Now, I think that is so key. Like it's Fiddler doesn't need to be just for developers, right? Because there are right. so many things we can solve with uh, when we go under the network stack. And when you talk about like IT and any type of support, like a lot of the times you're just lost. Like you don't know what the user is doing. And, and uh -huh. this is a way for you to get that visibility and get it and get it to you quickly. Yeah. So that's that's exciting. And then Fiddler everywhere, it's now working everywhere, like it says. Yes. So it works on a Mac, works on uh, Linux as well. So I'm I'm excited about the future of Fiddler. But yeah, and is, just yeah. last night we published a Fiddler roadmap. Yeah. Um, so if everyone Very goes, cool. you know, to teller.com slash fiddler, you'll see a new roadmap mm -hmm. which talks about some really big enhancements, new features, and we're probably talking a dozen. Wow. Um, I'm gonna so post that so thing cool. real quick. Yeah. So it's teller.com uh, whack fiddler, right? Yeah. All right, there you go. Posted the link up there, but uh, I'm excited with all the directions with Fiddler is taking. We actually mm -hmm. just had um, uh, a big release for all of the other stuff we do, which is .NET and JavaScript. And um, you, you're going to hear, hear uh, Eve talk much more about Fiddler next week, because next week uh, our streams are going to change up a little bit. There's a lot of stuff we have to cover. Uh, for Blazor, for WinUI, and for all things .NET and JavaScript and Fiddler and reporting and testing. So it's going to be a week-long kind of love fest for all the things yeah. we do. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, but we're not here to just talk about Fiddler. We're here to talk about you. Uh, so Much do you better talking about, about Fiddler sometimes. I you know, know, I know. But um, <laughs> I want to know more about you. Sure. Uh, so, like, do you have a hard time sometimes explaining like what you do uh, to the community or to non-technical folks? Maybe. I mean, it is a little tricky. I think I've finally boiled it down to explain it to a ten-year-old. I don't know <laughs> if you know my level can go any any lower in terms of age, but a majority of my job, you know, is heavily writing and content. Yeah. Right. So whether that be for the website, for a blog post, for banner ads, for press yeah. releases. Um, mm -hmm. And when you start to explain that to um, friends, neighbors, children, they're not really, <laughs> it doesn't sound super exciting. But the one right. nice thing about my job is I've always been able to travel, right? So mm -hmm. like going to places like um, Spain for tech ed or all nice. those trips to uh, California for PDC and all of those type of events. Then people are like, oh, oh so what do you get to do with these events? And like, we go to a Microsoft trade show and oh, you get to like talk yeah. with thousands of people. You know, that's when usually the questions are um, yeah. a little bit more engaging and it, it kind of clicks a little bit. Yeah. You mentioned PDC. Uh, let, let's be careful here, Eve. Like you're, you're dating us here. I know. Whoops. I <laughs> forgot. <you> know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We have been doing this for a while. Yeah. Um, so like, this is all that you do right now, but uh, wh where, where did you start? Like, is this what you always wanted to do, like education wise, like out of college or how did you end up like in the tech industry? So I I would say out of college, um, I went into tech, but a different type of tech. It was more okay. automotive. Um, oh, interesting. And then I transitioned into, I, I'm gonna date myself again, but I transitioned into this world back when Silverlight was really getting, getting ah, popular. Ah, the S-word. <laughs> I, I spent like two years on, on Silverlight. It, it was it was great. So the dev yeah. experience and the community was great. It's just uh, some, uh, and like the more we work in tech, like we can't just carry our emotional baggage. We have to let go. Yeah. When it's time, we just have to let go and move on. Yeah. yeah. And then from so there, you, pretty much been addicted. You know, I've covered yeah. a lot of different platforms. Um, you know, in my day, you know, Silverlight and WinForms and 
mean, it's even around, you know, when people jQuery libraries, that was, you know, yeah. a lot of the talk. So. Yeah, I mean, jQuery gets like, it's, it's a mixed bag. A lot of people have moved on, but again, a lot of enterprises are still happily chugging along. So there's nothing wrong, whatever works for right. uh, your workflows, right? Yeah. So given given uh, where you are right now with what you do, uh, what would you say are like the things that really excite you about maybe the product, maybe the community, and what do you say are some of the challenges that you have? Sure. I guess one of the big exciting things, I love being able to take like all of this complex information and translate it into like relatable stories that people find engaging. That's so true. that's fun. Very well I mean, yeah. you we've all read documentation, right? I mean, it is a lot in there, but tell me like, you know, what is this going to do for me? How's it going to work? How's it going to save me time? How's it going to save me money? Um, you know, and, and why should I care? And that's, that's an exciting mm -hmm. part of, of this job is, taking all of that and really honing in on what that key takeaway is. Yeah, that, that is so well said because it's like any type of developer advocacy, it's so much about storytelling, right? I mean, there are docs, there are everything else, but it's about like your experience. And then like you said, like, how does this relate to me and how yeah. can you help? So, yeah, that's well said. And what do you find like uh, things that maybe are not challenging, but that just things that make you want to do more? Well, sure. I mean, just kind of what we've talked about. I mean, technology and the software is always changing, right? Mm -hmm. So whether it be new releases or enhancements or platform changes, uh, we really have to stay on top of everything yeah. um, because yeah. what you knew yesterday might not be enough for today. Yeah. So you have to constantly, you know, be willing to be yeah. adaptive and learning and, and seeking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Technology has evolved and, and we need to with, uh, with that, yeah. So um, I, I hear uh, from the grapevine that you have some fun stories about <laughs> net, network stacks, and you also mentioned like Northwind databases to me. That's even dating us further back. I know. But, uh, Should... any, any fun stories you have, like from the community or your experiences? I just I remember this was years ago, and it was it was probably like at a Dev Intersections event, um, oh, and I had to create a new ASP.NET project and connect it to the Northwind database, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I was like so excited and, you know, I had really worked on, you know, my presentation and, you know, all the steps, because this is before there were like different demos that you would just run or you could play for someone, mm -hmm. right? It was like, you had to do it yourself. Um, and at that point, I don't think I realized that some people thought that that particular, um, sample was kind of cheesy like <laughs> you know i've seen blogs people are like oh i'm connected so i feel like sometimes the joke was on me a little bit because i just i delivered it with such um like i said confidence and i was so proud of myself and i feel like people are probably <laughs> looking back being like okay like that was that was decent <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and that happens. I mean, and and again, we can we can do the best uh, we can, uh, and and maybe you're you're helping somebody kind of get the gist of it quickly, even if you even if it's cheesy, and yeah. like while we are, while we are talking, I just looked it up. Like you you, you the Norton database is still out there and very much kicking it alive. You you can get it for all of your like SQL uh, server or yeah. SQL little things that you want to throw on. It, it it was good back in the days because. It was uh, like an example which had like an immediate like 20 or so tables and you could mm -hmm. join, you could relate things, you could show off uh, demos that are somewhat realistic. Yeah. It was good. It was good. Um, there was uh, there was also Contoso, which was another database that was heavily used. There were a few around. Uh, I heard VentureWorks. VentureWorks, was... another one. Yeah. 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 Um, cool. And um, in, in terms of like Fiddler and uh, what you see um, from the developer community or your, your customers, anything funny, anything unique that kind of stood out to you? I think part of the uniqueness is, I mean, there is such a big community around it. And hmm. we have people that are talking about Fiddler um, just because the joy of it and the fun. Yeah. I think the biggest thing that I'm noticing is that people don't realize how many different features are in Fiddler. You know, like they're familiar with those like two yeah. set kind of like um, features that they've been using, they know in and out, but they haven't taken the time to see all of the other things like yeah. auto responder and some of these other features yeah. that are super powerful. Um, and that's one of the things that I'm trying to get the word out about. Like there's more to Fiddler than you probably know. 
yeah, kind of like, yeah, did you know yeah. Fiddler does blank to this? Yeah. I could probably rattle off quite a few and be <laughs> like, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, that is very true. That is very true. Because just like looking under the network, like like Chrome DevTools will, will do some of that. It's the real strength is, like you said, in like looking under HTTPS traffic or autoresponder, which is fantastic because you can like turn off your network and have your team test from your service because it will just relay back what it gave mm -hmm. you one time. Uh, so those are features, like you said, are, are really handy for dev teams. Uh, yeah, and I'm sure like it's it's like a ongoing challenge for you to just keep on talking about these things and educate. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So uh, Fiddler is clearly something you are excited about. You, you spend a lot of a lot of time, <laughs> yeah. but uh, you, you also deal with folks like us and everybody else uh, in the dev community that you see and hear talk about different types of technologies. Uh, Anything um, out there right now that you see that you find exciting, interesting? I mean, I'm really into the whole like artificial intelligence and machine learning. Mm. I find that so intriguing. Um, yeah. I read a book. It was called um, Think Again by Adam Grant. And it talks about how they took like two debaters and put them together on the topic of like subsidizing preschool. Mm -hmm. And the one... I think she they presented her as like a 12 year old girl going up against, you know, this really seasoned um, individual. And the fact that she was not even a real person and able to make an argument. But the really cool part at the end of the day, the reason that she did not win is because she lacked the ability to connect with the audience at an empathetic level. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was like mind blowing. Like she had all these great arguments and you're listening to this like, how is this happening? And then you realize, you know, um, the story behind it. Um, and it just kind of goes into kind of what we're doing too. It's like connecting with the people. You can have the best arguments, the best positioning, you know, in the world, but if you don't make that common ground connection, it's going to be hard to, you know, sway anyone. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, and then uh, AI and ML has just come so uh, so far along, and mm -hmm. I mean th th there are some challenges uh, up ahead. Like you, you always talk about the ethics of it, um, because like uh, w when you are having a system learn, it's only as good as what you, it's been given to learn. So some of our biases do creep in, but again, I think there is uh, space for like sensibilities to be baked in a little bit into yeah, into AI, point. and yeah. Yeah, that's exciting. We'll we'll see, we'll see how um, uh, how how software systems evolve with uh, with AI. It's it's everywhere, and like yeah. in everything we do, it's it's everywhere. Yeah, it's it's not just like um, Facebook or Amazon chasing you around with ads that you of products you have seen anywhere. <laughs> that's just a very basic part of it. But there's just so many like the decision making systems and and the algorithms that they use. That's the key. That's where. The, the neural networks, that's where the real magic is. Yes. So there's a lot to it. Yeah. Cool. Um, are you uh, are you kind of a gadgety person? Do you have any favorite tech toys? I mean, I have a favorite tech toy. I don't know how it's going to... I think my favorite tech toy is my Nest doorbell. Oh, interesting. Um, and I, it seems like an odd one, but I like it no, because uh, I can perfect. pretend I'm not home without worrying that I'm like... Right. Letting someone down who needs help for me. Or before you kind of felt like you need to answer the door. Now I can be like, oh, wait, I don't need to answer the door. Like, yeah. you know. You know, they, these things, like the whole like smart automation thing is just such a word to get into, right? Uh, we have a ring uh, doorbell or kind of a camera. It does the same thing. Now, um, do you also have like a smart lock so you can lock and unlock your door? I don't have that. I think those are very neat, but. They are. But I mean, you, you, you can you can raise the concern like, what if the tech fails? But I mean, you you can like physically go and uh, lock and unlock the door. But like that's the next step where if you if you see somebody and you're not home or if you want to let let your kids in, you, you can unlock the door and yeah. let them in. Um, but it, it takes a little bit of like finagling to kind of uh, retrofit your your locks with a smart lock. Um, I think that's been the hindrance. Yeah. Haven't quite. Yeah. No one's got that motivation in my house to do that yet. <laughs> 
Yeah, we we are in a uh, well, we moved actually in the middle of uh, the pandemic, which I, I feel like so many people have done, like the housing industry and then the boom. It's it's very apparent in the pandemic. But I mean, I've had a kind of a fresh start to do things right a little bit in terms of cameras and smart locks and mm-hmm. you know all types of automation with our voice assistants, and it's it's fun. It's just it's an expensive uh, hobby at times, but it's fun to kind of get into yeah. it. Yeah. So uh, you, you're obviously busy all day with work um, and and travel, which travel looks like you're uh, walking to your office or your dining room these days. Right. right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think there, there's you know light at the end of the tunnel. You, you mentioned dev intersection. That's actually uh, my first. Um, thing to get out of the house in the like year and a half uh, there's one coming up in june so uh fingers crossed uh we'll, we'll see yeah that'll be exciting yeah yeah uh and i think just like yesterday um uh, cdc is recommending like we are slowly getting out of it and uh yeah we'll see um uh, the the fully vaccinated folks like you can tell from our from our halo or like the glow of our skin right that's how you know <laughs> Uh, yeah, that'll be interesting. So um, this is all about your work, um, but uh, tell me, what do you do outside of work? Like, what's your work-life balance like? So I would say, I think of it more as like an integration, right? Um, and I think it's one thing that I really like about, you know, is the job um, that I have now is, you know, it is flexible. I mean, it can be demanding, but there is some flexibility to that. And I think that is that is really important, you know, as well as the environment that you work in, the people you're around. So I feel really blessed with that. Um, when I'm not working, you'll probably find me, there's a studio here called Cycle Bar. Hmm. And it's an indoor cycling experience with like amazing rack, rock and like rap music. Interesting. <laughs> so that's been something I've been getting into trying to go, you know, a couple times a week, just to get out of the so- house and get some exercise. So they like blast it like through the speakers or like is every- and it's like a whole every- lighting experience. It's like a oh. whole theatrical, interesting, uh, immersive experience. It's 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 fun. So everyone who is in there is having the same experience at the same time. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah, just a little bit more like- upbeat. Keeps you going. Keeps you engaged. Yeah. Makes the time go by faster for some of us who need that. Yeah. 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 I was thinking of like uh, like you've seen the new like peloton type things where. You bike, but you you have your own little scenery, and you you have your own custom yeah. music. But this is this is different. You're saying like it's like lights and music for everyone. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. Very nice. That would be similar to that, like if you were there, you know, in that yeah. Peloton actual yeah. studio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything else fun that you do outside of work? Mm, I think one thing that surprises people is I'm really into target shooting. Yeah. What so, type? Um, like pistol. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Pittsburgh has like yeah. a really a lot of cool indoor outdoor um, mm-hmm. ranges. Nice. So that's something that I like to do. Very nice. Very nice. Cool. And uh, what about food? Are you are you a foodie? Are you into food, or do you I eat to survive? <laughs> no, I love food. Um, like Pittsburgh doesn't have a great food scene. That is, that would probably be my one kind of downfall. Like, there's tons of chain restaurants. And I feel like you go to some other cities, like, there's something different in every corner. At least right. where I'm located, it's, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, you know? I, I agree. It, it can be better for the size right. of the city that Pittsburgh is. It, it could be yeah. better. But uh, what's the place which is... Uh, uh, it, it started in Pittsburgh. It, it sells like sandwiches with like oh, yes. fries the in Manny's. it. Uh, yes, yes. So oh. that that's something that's making its way out of Pittsburgh to other cities. And yeah, uh, if, yeah. if no one has had it for Manny's, you can pretty much get any like combination of meat, and they put a coleslaw <laughs> on it with French fries and bread with cheese. And I recommend the capicola; yeah. it's really good. But oh. trying to stay away from Manny's too much doesn't really. <laughs> Not the healthiest type. <laughs> Not the healthiest, but it's a great splurge. Yeah, yeah. And do you cook? I do cook. Um, it's It's been hard, you know, in terms of, like, going out to eat. And, I mean, I did do DoorDash and some of those other ones for a while. But I would say yeah. I, I probably pick six days a week. Oh, nice. nice. I mean, nothing fancy, but, you know, yeah. trying to 
feed myself and the family. That's true. Yeah. You know, when, when the pandemic started, like we all had like so much energy to kind of learn new things to cook and slowly over like a year and a half of doing this, like our energies have dwindled a little bit. Like yeah. let's just get by <laughs> one right. night, one dinner yeah. at a time. Like, but, uh, I yeah. can't follow all these TikTok recipes. They look amazing, <laughs> but I, I can't do it. Uh, hey, uh, it, I, I hear like BizTalk is the thing, like it's TikTok for business now, but we shall see <laughs> how that uh, shapes up. It's just like, uh, maybe it's just an age thing, like Snapchat and TikTok is just not something, uh, not something I'm into, but I don't know, maybe just me. Yeah. It's hard. So, I think sometimes like depending on the age of your kids. That's how you get maybe you um, get sucked back it. in. Yeah, you know, yeah. like I, sh I shouldn't know any TikTok dances. But I think, <laughs> how you yeah. do? How, how old are your kids? Um, ten. Ten. All right. So and you just have one. Sure. Yeah, just the one. Just the one. Very nice. Keeps you busy, I'm sure. It does. Yeah. Okay, so this may be a trick question, but if uh -oh. you had a uh, million dollars right now, what would you do? <sighs> So one thing about me is my brain thinks in terms of songs and I never, I th always kind of thought I was alone in that until, um, you know, talking with Sarah and she's like, my brain thinks that way too. So when I think if I had a million dollars, I always think that bare naked lady song, like I'm going to buy all the fanciest ketchups, all the fancy Dijon ketchups, <laughs> like the first thing that comes to mind. So if you don't know the song, oh. look it up. Um, but in reality, I would probably, after buying the ketchups, I would probably go on like a lavish trip and probably invest the rest. You, you can buy a lot of ketchup. <laughs> uh, nice. um, so you said trips like, uh, are you into travel? Do you like? I do like to travel. Right I mean, it's obviously we haven't been able to go to many places, but last summer yeah. we tried to do some smaller trips, like going to the Finger Lakes, which mm -hmm. is about five hours from here. Uh, yeah. This year, trying, hopefully going to get to the beach. Um, like South Carolina, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. probably just driving trips for now, but I would like to get back to going some more. Yeah. Fun aren't we all, aren't we all? Yeah. I mean, again, like I said, I think we are, we are slowly crawling out of this uh, yeah. mode. We shall see. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and travel gets, uh, gets to be expensive at times, but it's, it's just not something you ever waste your money on because it just right. opens your, your, your horizons, your, your eyes. Yeah. That's what I'm big into. Like, I want the experiences, right? I mean, especially, um, you know, for kids and stuff like that, just to be different places, see different perspectives, right. experience, yeah. you know, different foods and cultures. I think that's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So um, looking through maybe what you are doing now and like what you're looking forward to in the next like six months or one year, two year uh like what 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 inspires you what are you looking forward to hmm. i guess like like deeply what inspires me is always like constantly be evolving trying to be like the best version of myself um what inspires me you know within my work is just hearing all of the ideas you know that the team has for the products and the future directions they want to take it um and just seeing the kind of the culmination of all of these things come together and these efforts and seeing that realized um, really keeps me going. Yeah, yeah well said. The, there, there is just no way to kind of fake our passion for something. And it's, right. it's good when your passion lines up with what you're doing and, and you just yes. enjoy what you're doing more. So, yeah. So thank you for uh, kind of taking the time out. I know you're super busy to just kind oh, of thanks for having me. me. And, you know, like if you're at a conference or like at a work meeting, we would like sit down with a cup of coffee or, you I know, know. Like a, some other beverage type and just have a chat, which we're missing out. So yes. uh, at least we got to hang out for uh, for half an hour. And uh, Eve, thank you for all that you and the team does for Fiddler. It's just always been um, a thing that so many developers use. And um, I'm so glad that we're telling the story more to say, hey, Fiddler can do so much more uh, than just what you've been using it for. So thanks for everything. No, and I appreciate having me on, and I'm hopeful, too, that we'll we'll be able to meet up soon and get yeah, back soon. on to those, that conference circuit. Absolutely. 
And uh, chat room, thank you for hanging out with us. Um, today is Friday. I, I keep checking on the day of the week. I keep forgetting nowadays. It's all the same. It's all a blur. But uh, um, our good friend Alyssa should be on uh, later today, uh, this afternoon with UI Fridays. And like I said, next week, uh, we are going to go into an all week long um, love fest for all things .NET and JavaScript <laughs> and, and reporting and Fiddler and testing. So it should be a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of different streams and we're going to actually repeat the streams for different time zones just to make sure we are hitting europe and asia as well um so yeah come and join us as your uh time permits oh hey uh before we end look who's uh lurking in the chat room hey, uh, hey. Robert. we know who you are robert <laughs> good to see you good to see you so robert is um an absolute fiddler expert has been for years and years and years now he's been speaking about fiddler before you know every, anybody else was so thank yes. you robert for everything that you do and all of your feedback all of your expertise uh, yeah good to see you and I, I see robert like all the time uh during normal conference seasons and and uh times but uh yeah haven't seen you in a long time hopefully soon but uh, yeah, thanks for all that you do as well, Robert. And uh, yeah, keep using uh, the Fiddler folks, uh, all the different types of Fiddler nowadays. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure uh, Eve and the team love you, Robert, as well. Yeah. So thank you, thank you. So yeah, um, Eve, I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more from you uh, on the blogs, on the conference circuits, uh, where we talk more about Fiddler. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, we love you. We love the team. So. Yeah, uh, keep rocking. Well, thank you. And I'm excited uh, for your lineup next week. Sounds great. Yeah, uh, looking forward to it. All right, folks, that's it from us uh, for this Friday, just the chat show. Uh, good to hang out, and uh, hopefully all of you stay safe, stay productive, and we shall see you on the next stream. All right, okay. bye for now. Thank you. Bye, Sam. <laughs>